So here, the first change is to how selected shapes are indicated. Um, you can see there's just a simple bounding box around the selected shape. The selected shape used to be highlighted with a checkerboard, which made it very obvious what the selected shape was, but um, it made it difficult to see the color you were editing because the checkerboard would sort of interfere with the, the overall color. So this is a simplified way of doing that that uh, will hopefully interfere less with the actual shape. Um, now once you have a selected shape and you go in and you edit the fill or the stroke color, so let's uh, pick a shape and start editing. The first thing you'll notice is all the extra stuff goes away. Here's the color picker. Um, the, the highlight here goes away when I'm inside the color picker and as well as these lines here, the little control points and handles on all the shapes, those go away. And the thinking is that when you're editing the color, you don't really want to see those things. You want to see the shape itself. So the canvas here becomes more of a preview of the final result. And as I start editing the color, you can see that it changes live on the object. So I can see exactly what it's going to look like if I press OK. So of course, if I cancel, it just goes back to what it was. If I choose a color, click OK, that becomes a new color of the object. And the same thing for the stroke. You can see the live change in the stroke. Um, now besides just the fill and stroke color, I've done this for brushes as well. So if I go in and I start editing a brush, or if I select a brush for this shape, I can see exactly what it looks like uh, before I ever commit to it. So if I want to play with one of these and say, uh, say this, I can change the brush spacing. Um, I can change whether it has a, a jitter angle or not. So previously you had a preview down here of what the brush might look like. We still get that, but we also see it on, on the actual shape. Let's say we, I don't know, it doesn't really matter what when we choose just an example here of uh, previewing the brush before it gets applied. So that's fill color, stroke color, brush. Um, it also works for effects. So if I go in here and I choose an effect, say shaded, as I edit this, I'm gonna change the offset and the blur factor. You can see it directly on the shape live as I move it around, so you get uh, an instant preview of what it's going to look like. So that's fill color, stroke color, brush, effects, and then styles as well. So I've set this up so that all of these objects have a style applied to them. If I edit that style, um, right now I've set it so that the style isn't doing anything, but let's say the style modifies the fill color. So now if I go in and edit this one style, you can see I'm actually editing the fill color on all the objects that use that style, which I think, you know, we may in the future need to do some improvements to the overall style window, but this is, um, there's no guessing anymore about what shapes are going to change. You see immediately all the affected shapes that use that style. So let's, uh, pick some color and then um, let's add a gradient to the style as well. So now all the shapes have the gradient applied. Let's say, uh, I don't know what I'm going after here, random coloring. Now each shape has its own uh, fill handle, of course. This one, this shape down here, you can see that the shading is still in effect. So let's go back to this shape. And the shading, you can see it's it's combined with the gradient from the style and it all gets previewed live. So um, no real change in the UI, but a change in the behavior that I think will make it easier to work with colors and styles. 